All right, welcome back. Now on to the last leg of our discussions for today. After months of threats that Nigeria's economy might slip back into recession, the International Monetary Fund has made a U-turn, saying the same economy is still on the radar of international investors. Now, the IMF says there is interest in Nigeria's securities market, but that investors will still worry over currency control and getting trapped. The Central Bank of Nigeria had introduced capital controls following dollar shortages triggered by a currency crisis last year when the Naira hit a record of 520 Naira to the dollar. Now, the market control mechanism initiated by the CBN made it uh, cumbersome for investors to access their monies, which resulted in panic and mass repatriation of funds. Nigeria's currency market for investors has traded 22 uh, dollars, uh, uh, two billion dollars since it was launched. And according to a market operator, uh, FMDQ OTC Securities Exchange. Mm. With us in the studio is a financial expert, Mukhtar Mohammed, to break it down for us to understand this even better. Good morning to you and thank you for joining morning, us. Good morning, Mukhtar. Nice to see you. Thank you. All right. Uh, you heard what we just read. Uh, yeah. Is it about that the Nigerian economy is wholly viable now or is just a section of it? I think it's a section of it. Uh, okay. If you go to detail of that report, it's the capital market decks of the International Monetary Fund that came with this um, report that the, the Nigerian market is mm -hmm. toast of investors. They were even surprised that investors were actually asking mm -hmm. them that they really want to invest in the Nigerian capital market. And mm -hmm. we, we need to look at various reasons attributing to that factor. One, the low valuation price of our equity, of, of some of these um, equity, um, stocks in the equity market. You have to look at the export and import uh, export and investor window that was created by the mm -hmm. CBN that has not gone below 365 to the dollar since its inception so you look at that they look at it but they have the challenge like you rightly pointed out in your report a two-way exchange system whereby you could come in and they repatriate your fund mm -hmm. and this has been taken care of uh, by the CBN and also not to forget that we have stable exchange, um, a stable exchange rate and also oil price seems to be very stable mm -hmm. I'll have peace in the Niger Delta. All right. Now, with, with this now, uh, if, if the capital aspect of things is, 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 is strong enough to give confidence to investors, how would, how, how would that translate? Or how would that rub off on the areas that doesn't have confidence? Look, unfortunately, uh, we, we, we're looking at investors coming from the foreign, 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 foreign portfolio, I mean, foreign investors. Mm -hmm. You look at it in two ways. We look at foreign portfolio investors, investment, and we look at foreign direct investment. Investments. So now, if you look at foreign portfolio investment, it has been on the high side. One, because of our yield in terms of treasury bill and also in terms of valuation in the capital market, which is still very, very low and the, 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 the companies are doing very well. But when you look at the foreign direct investment, mm -hmm. which happens to be that you are coming here to establish a company, you are coming here to see how you can key into other key areas that are not like power, mm -hmm. like railway, mm -hmm. all those sectors. You long can see that investment. long term investment, you could see that the valuation has actually come down to a negative. Mm -hmm. So now what are we looking what are we seeing here? We are seeing investors coming for the hot money, coming whereby they are looking at how can I come in here, make quick money and go. Cash. Nobody is still ready to stick and stay in this market in, in the Nigeria and take, uh, the, risk for and take the risk for a long so time. So in the long run, which is uh, beneficial or not to the Nigerian uh, economy, FPI or FDI? Because it seems FPI is growing no, no. while the FDI is... When you look no. at FDI is beneficial in the long term, mm. it's what will cause a lot of economic activities that will create jobs, that will improve our infrastructure. Mm. But portfolio investor is coming in to, ex to just take a kill out of an established market mm. that is doing quite well. You are just coming in to take profit margin mm. and then exit and look at good entry point and come in. That already, you, those ones are only making money for themselves. But then the, the, sec, the, the, the tax incentive, that, the tax incentive that will come to the government is just there. But okay. trickling down to the average man on the streets is quite unfortunate. Even, even not only to the average man, even to the middle class, mm. Nigerian middle class also don't play the equity market or the capital market that much to get the kind of return these foreigners get from our market. So, so it, when it comes to portfolio investment, uh, foreign portfolio investment exactly, is it just the tax that Nigeria benefits from all of the investment in that regard, from that of, window? Of course, it's just the tax you benefit from. It's mm. just like an invest. It's the normal it's investment. It's just like a Nigeria investing in the market. Mm. Well, when I invest in the market, I pay my withholding tax if I'm going to take dividend. And also, if you trade off, 
if you trade up um, selling early, then you have a little bit of tax bracket, which is very, very low comparable to other markets. So mm -hmm. they will always come here and I know fully aware that they make a good return when they come here compared to their own market over there when they are making like less than 2% in treasury bill. But yeah, early in treasury bill alone, they can make as high as 18 to 19%. So it's, it's easier for them to bring in their money and knowing that they have the liquidity mm -hmm. and the exchange rate is favorable to them, then they will come in and make the money. Here. So during the process of pre repatriation, is there no uh, possibility of a it's creating maybe uh, some kind of liquidity squeeze in the currency market. It does. It does. Um, you, you could see that play out this week because okay. the CBM did not come to the OMO. That is where they have to come and buy up treasury bit to mop up liquidity. There will come a little bit of panic and they, they, you could see that playing down in the exchange rate and mm. it went to as, as high as 365. We've been maintaining 360, 361 for a while now. Mm. So you, you, you could see that it also to go that there's still fragility in terms of the exchange. So meaning by the government still paying somehow from the from the money it gets as tax now, it could be paying it back again look, in the, the valuation uh, of the currency. Yes, somehow. look the way we run our economy is uh, is um, we just well, wherever we earn from our foreign exchange, we use it to defend our currency. That's mm -hmm. how it has been. There has nothing has changed, and so even the current uh, the current leadership of the CBN is is doing very well. But mm -hmm. again, with the type of challenge they have when they came in that you know that they still have to do a lot. So they need to try to do stability. You know, you have, you have stability in terms of monetary rate, stability in terms of physical rate. We, think of, say, we keep saying that uh, stability in terms of monetary rate is, 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 is better now. Mm. But in terms of physical, physical mm. we've not done anything. Now, it, we, we, you have said that it, it is more beneficial in the long run mm. for, for us to have foreign direct investment into the mm. country. Now, all may not be on ground now, but if government has to take the steps, what, what, are, what are the things to be done to attract that kind of FDIs into the country beyond the portfolio investment we're you see, having? We, we already have the market mm. in terms of infrastructure. We have deficits in infrastructure. They want to come. Now, they want to come in, but we need to put up a lot of um, policies that will help them to come in and also help us to come in. Number one, they have to be a little bit of tax incentive for them to come in. Mm. Then they need to look at security because nobody wants to invest in, 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 in an economy that is not secure. Mm. Then secondly, they want to see consistencies in policies because what happened in Nigeria is that there's no consistency in policies. When a new administration comes mm. in, not just a new administration, even coming a new minister or a new uh, whoever comes mm. in, he try to tickle with whatever has been there. So there must be consistency in policy. We need to drop in, a good plan work. That's what we have, the economic recovery growth, growth plan. plan. But remember that we have always had plans. We have not remember the needs plan, all those plans. Mm -hmm. After the new administration comes, they tickle with it. So they need to see consistency. They need to enter into an agreement with the government and know that the agreement is with the government. It's not the with administration. the administration. Mm -hmm. So we need to come out with the con We've seen a lot of policies, some assaulting when it's not favorable to the minister, it's not favorable to the government in power. They tend to come in and, and play along with you could see that playing up in the Nigerian port authorities also. Mm -hmm. So we need to we need to be consistent in our policies. We need to follow the economic growth plan and let it run over, run by seasonal professional mm -hmm. void of politics. And it seems that uh, this it, it, still talking about inconsistency now. It seems that uh, if the gains being made uh, in FPIs at the moment in the country is solely dependent on uh, the peace in the Niger Delta, uh, the currency, and so many other factors, meaning that, it, and then the pr price of crude oil at the international market, meaning that if there is a downward uh, movement of the crude oil price now, maybe somehow something happens uh, in the Niger Delta. It could affect. Uh, it it, it the will affect it because what happened is that when we are in crisis in Nigeria, we talk about diversification. Mm. Mm. When we see where any time oil price fall below our mark, you see us cry about diversification. Oh, agriculture. Oh, mining. Oh. Immediately there is stability. Forget it. We forget about it. That's what is playing out now. Remember, last year till early part of this year, all we we're shouting about was how we are going to diversify the economy, how agriculture is going to be on the front burner. Immediately there is stability in the Niger Delta. Immediately the price of crude oil started going up. We are not talking diversification again. What we are not talking about is how to share the oil revenue in the three tiers of government, how to pay salary. Nobody is talking about investment. 
not even social investment in areas like agriculture and health. Mm. Nobody's looking at that that the and price education. of crude oil is education. Mm. Nobody is looking at that the price of crude oil is coming up now. So let's see how we can improve our educational sector. Let's see how we can improve our health sector. All we are thinking of now is how can we use this oil price to boost our political status mm. that, oh, when we came to power, we're able to grow the reserve. It's like a man that has money in the bank. Doesn't and you are so excited that you have so much money in the bank. You've forgotten that inflation eats up your money mm. when that money is not in circulation to generate something. Mm -hmm. We have a sovereign wealth fund. I expect the SS crude account by now should be invested in a sovereign wealth fund, which all OPEC nations have used to diversify their economy. Mm. We are not doing that. We, have, we, we just had reports recently where gov governors are saying a, a, a billion dollars will be removed from there for, to the, for the fight against uh, Boko, Haram. Uh, Boko Haram and insurgency. Well, um, security mm. is key in any economy. But then we, we, people have their, their, their reservation when it comes to that because uh, this was a group that was technically defeated. <laughs> so all of a sudden... From what they said. From what they said. All of a sudden, a group that was technically defeated we are now going back to the pre-Jonathan um, era that uh, billions was released to buy equipment. Mm. So is it that without equipment, we technically defeated them? Now what do we need so much again to fight them? But mm. that is one thing you don't play about, you don't play politics in. We, we might just say, as the media people say, whatever. Well, we don't know the security reports that they have. So you don't play politics with your economy. You don't play politics with your security. You must be up your game. So there's no political party. I personally think there's no political party. Where you should not be political party when it comes to the economy of the nation and to the security of the nation. Mm -hmm. Everybody should come together and see how we can secure. Because once those two areas are secure, then the future of a nation is established. Of course, we are told that apart from security, really, education, health are also important as well to drive any economy. Because yeah. African countries and even the world are moving to knowledge-based economies for themselves. Because that's the only way... Your economy will be on autopilot. It will be working uh, for itself, by itself. But then, that is not what we are seeing in Nigeria. So how can uh, Nigerian government mop up the gains um, it's making in FBI, which, of course, IMF has attested to now that is becoming attractive. The worries are gradually fading away uh, to uh, boost the economy. Maybe the money being made from this one, which is, uh, of course, foreign exchange, at foreign exchange uh, to use it to boost the economy. Even, at, even though we know that FDI, like we, we have analyzed now, it might not happen pretty much soon. Yeah, I, I, think, I think the government needs to get their act together, the fiscal policies. You will keep saying that the fiscal policies have not got their act together because I've not seen any meaningful project. I, need, I, I stand to be corrected that it's ongoing, that we could see it and say, look, this project is ongoing and it's going to help. Just, let's, just you don't need to go far. Just look, take the look at the legacy button that was something people were excited about, mm. all of a sudden, work have stopped. Nothing seems to be happening then. Mm. You talk about the, the Ray project that we all shouted about, the Cali, um, Lagos to Port Harcourt, passing all through. Mm. East-West we Road. East-West, we're not hearing anything. Mm. And Those now are that key area. The Lagos Ibadan Expressway Express has been suspended. Put on hold. <laughs> so, we, we, we see, no, nobody will come to your economy. Nobody will grow our economy for us. Mm -hmm. That's one thing we don't know. A foreign investor will not come to grow your economy. They only come to see what they can gain and go out. Mm -hmm. Nigerian economy must be grown by Nigerians. So we need to come to the ownership mentality. And that is where area, that's one, only some few Nigerians are doing incredibly well. People like the Aligo Dangote, the Macadeno girls, mm -hmm. they are trying to see how they can develop our economy. Mm. And they are even exporting but, but our economy but, to whatever. But, but, but they now are still we shut as, as businessmen. Men. Yes, yeah. as Nigerians. Even though it's going to rub off on the country and all of that, and then they fly the Nigerian flag because they are Nigerians, but they are going to reason from the mind of a businessman. Look, mm. the truth of the matter is no economy grow without the businessman mentality. Okay. Mm. If we are going to practice capitalism, let's practice capitalism to the fullest. <laughs> we have mixed economy. That's we, we just, we're just trying to be mixed. We, we are trying to be political. Mm. Mm. We, is it politically correct? Will it politically enhance our chances in the next election? Mm. Nobody's looking at Is it economically viable to grow our economy? Remember it. Remember now, all of a sudden, we are not hearing the clamor, the shout of restructuring like Anymore. we used to have. Mm. Like I said then, it's not about it. 
What we should be clamoring for is restructuring of our economy. Once we have recovery of our economy, we have justice. Once a man can eat, that's when a man can be able to ask for his, for his right. Mm. All right. Now, b before we go, let me ask you this. The, there are still concerns about the multiple exchange rates. How is that helping or not the, the economy? It cannot help the economy as it stands, mm. the multiple exchange rate. But again, you, you, there's nothing you can do about it. Remember, even in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, um, in the budget, the exchange rate was stuck at 305. Mm -hmm. um, the parallel market is 360, went to 365. Mm. The export and investor window is about 365. 365. Mm -hmm. So CBN is saying their target is to get it to 360. And all that is depending on piecing the Niger Delta mm. and good oil price. And then, remember by, by January now, our OPEC output will be reduced. Will be reduced, mm. exactly. So, <laughs> it's not um, hurry yet, but I think we will continue to have those multiple exchange systems until the government is able to diversify the, the economy. And then, remember, one thing people don't know is that the, this volatility exchange rate, sometimes is always caused because of our importation of petroleum products. Mm. Mm. Once we can begin to address that problem, whereby we begin to refine our domestic petroleum product here, I think we'll have relatively stability. Well, the, the minister has promised anyway that by January 2018, the refineries will be worked on to start a... Promise. It's a promise. He no, promise. When it comes to the refinery, <laughs> the only refinery that we are very optimistic that will, con will, that will address this problem of scarcity, also maybe at, in the long run, bring stability to the exchange what market, happened? is the refinery that will be will come on stream in 2019. Oh, that's Any <laughs> other one, I think, is just promise. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mokchar Mohammed, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you Always coming. a pleasure thank you being here. Compliment right. of the season. Yeah, same to you. you All same. right, this is where we end the, the discussion now. But before we go, let's uh, still remind you of the papers this uh -huh. morning. We had, just in case you didn't uh, meet the paper review we did earlier on, Punch newspaper this morning is, is re reporting that the fuel queues reappear in Lagos, persist mm. in Abuja and others as oil workers begin strike today. Mm. That's yeah. what the Punch newspaper is reporting. Okay, the Vanguard says that UK court orders return of $85 million Malibu oil loot. Final judicial order for remittance granted on Friday. Money not yet in FG's coffers, but coming soon. That's according to Malami. And the Daily Sun this morning is reporting my life by Buhari, governors, others felicitate with the president at 75. He was so he marked his birthday mm -hmm. recently. And then we have a, a picture of fuel queues there. Fuel scarcity expands station cell above 145 naira. Mm. That's the Daily Sun. Right. The most uh, front pages of the National Dailies today are dedicated to the celebration of President Buhari's birthday yesterday. Well, under it, the major story, $1 billion anti Boko Haram battle plan sparks row. Government, it's to finish off insurgents, Shetima defense plan. WK demands special cash for Niger Delta, Sarah Kicks. That's according to the nation. All right, and the Vanguard newspaper has a picture of the president and her, his adorable, one of her oh, yeah, adorable granddaughter. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you took this one? Yes, yeah, so Vanguard, the Vanguard. Got, yeah, Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> I think I, I'm attracted by the picture okay, the here. Picture. Okay. A very uh, adorable <laughs> granddaughter of the president. Now, this is where we come to the end of uh, today's edition of the program. Thank you very much for spending your morning with us. Tomorrow, we'll be back again with other issues to discuss concerning Nigeria, Africa, and the world. Have a great day ahead. I am Mike Okwache. And I am Aziza Olalua. Sisters, greetings to you all there. Join us tomorrow for another interesting edition. We'll leave you now with the weather forecast across major cities in the country for today. Bye for now.